live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Grace Hopper's Celebration of Women in Computing. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the Grace Hopper Conference in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Jeff Frick. We are here with Brenda Darden -Wilkins Wilkerson. She is the new president and CEO of the Anita Borg Institute. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited to be here. So you, you, you're, this, is, this is a new position for you. Absolutely. Um, but you've obviously been involved with the Anita Borg Institute yes. for your career, at least yes. been aware of it. So yes. tell, tell us a little bit about what this appointment means to you. Oh, it's so exciting. It's, it's like coming full circle back to a tech career that I started, uh, back to understanding the needs of women having been there, uh, gone through the various stages of my career, and then going into education, helping encourage women into uh, a career in tech, and now being able to advocate for them to, uh, to be able to contribute at whatever stage they're in, whether they're just entering or whether they're uh, one of the women who've been in tech for a long time and are, are getting promoted into C-suite, or uh, whether or not they, they went through traditional education pathway to get in, or if they learned on their own. So it's very exciting. And it cannot be <laughs> as hard as the challenge that you just accomplished. <laughs> I'm so impressed, getting <laughs> computer science as a requirement in the Chicago School yes, District. Yes. I mean, that must have been <laughs> quite a battle. I can only it imagine. Was. It was. But you know, when you want something and you believe in it, it is amazing how you find other people who believe like you do, and you form a, a collaborative partnership uh, that's really about caring about people. Right. You know, we, many of us had been in tech and we had had the challenges, and, and myself, uh, it, personally, I, I came about computer science accidentally. Uh, I went to college thinking I was going to go into medicine, so I was pre-med, and so I only learned about computer science accidentally. And, um, and of course, obviously it changed my trajectory. It's been my career path, and, and I was fine with that. Until years later, when we were working on uh, making computer science core, I was doing uh, some lobbying on Capitol Hills on a panel with a bunch of people. One happened to be a 19-year-old girl who had a story similar to mine. And I thought, how can this still be happening? Right, right. How can people not have this choice uh, and have this exposure early in life so that they know how to choose to contribute to the thing that's changing the way we live every single day? So do you see it changing? I mean, we, we, we talked about this so many times yeah. on theCUBE. You know, that, that the core curriculum is the core curriculum yes. that's been there forever. Yes, and the, yes, yes. The funny joke, right? Go back a hundred years, nothing yes. looks familiar except if you go to the school. <laughs> right. And they still, they're still reading the same Mark Twain book, right? right. right? Do you see it changing? Because computing is such a big part yeah. of everyday life now, and it's, it should be core yeah. everywhere. I mean, the yeah. fact that you got that through, do you see it yes. changing in a broader... Yes perspective from kind of your point of view? I do, I do. Um, education changes slowly, unfortunately, but actually when you look at, we launched Computer Science for All in 2013, and now it is an initiative that is national. Uh, the, the Obama White House embraced it, and we were so proud, um, and, and made the knowledge of going after computer science as something that all educators should really be thinking about as early as kindergarten for our students. It is making a difference in the lives of women. I've seen girls who many times would have been talked out of getting into a technical field by high school for the few that could trickle in and get into those one or two classes that used to be available. I'm seeing girls learn that they can be innovators as early as five, six, or seven years old. Okay, so I'm just waiting to see the world that they're going to create for us, right, right. when all of them, because now in Chicago they're required to have computer science to graduate. So that's everyone, so that's the key. It's computer science for all. And it is making a change. Not just for the kids, but the educators. I'm seeing women educators go, I could do this, I could get in and teach computer science, I could create something. That's exciting. So the Anita Borg <laughs> Institute does so much good work uh, around yeah. these issues, yes. um, from, from getting computers into the hands of kindergartners yes. to, to helping <laughs> women on the verge of C-suite jobs yes, yes. at some of the biggest tech companies in the, in the world. Where do you want to focus as the yeah. new president? What are, yeah. what are some of your special pet projects yeah. that you want to yeah. look at this, in the upcoming years? So I really want to think about how we dig into intersectionality 
Um, I want to first and foremost make vivid for more women of different backgrounds who may have traditionally been left out of the equation that there is an opportunity here for you if you want it. Okay, so that's about listening to them, that's about building additional um, alliances, that's about figuring out how to partner with organizations that we're all going in the same direction, right? So that more people uh, that bring their unique lenses and experiences can help us create solutions, products, services that serve better uh, just because they're there. And so that's the first and most important thing. But then of course, to, in order to do that, we have to figure out how to accelerate the work that an ADB.org does in helping companies to figure out how to solve any problems that they may be having about diversifying their workforce. So that's the other half of the equation. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see that the message is resonating? And this, I mean, you've been in the tech industry for, yeah. for you're a veteran of the yes, tech yes, industry. Yes, let's just say, you. let's put it at that. that, let's put it that. <laughs> but do you, I mean, just in terms of what we've been saying here too, is that it's, it's a lot of the same stuff, a lot of the yeah. same biases. And then, yeah. and then there's things like the Google Manifesto, yeah. which is this year, you yeah. know, and you just think, are we yeah. really still talking about this? Yeah. I mean, where are you on the spectrum of completely discouraged to hopeful and inspired? Oh, I'm hopeful. I mean, look around you. <laughs> okay. Look around you at all these women who are also hopeful. I am hopeful for them. We are hopeful together. And I think many times um, some of the remarks or things that happen out there are just an indication that maybe we're getting closer to moving that needle. You know, sometimes that's when you hear from people, is when changes are being made. So I'm not discouraged at all. I, I'm very excited to be on this team. It's a very powerful team. And to create the coalitions that our women are counting on us to do. It's pretty interesting with a lot of the negative stuff that happens in the yeah. news. It, it actually has a, has a really bright silver lining in that it kind of co coalesces that's right. that's people right. in ways that wouldn't that's necessarily right. happen. I that's thought right. you are your comment kind of about overt, or no, I guess the last guess, overt kind of discrimination yeah. versus yeah. kind of yeah. less overt. Yeah. It's harder to fight the less overt, yeah. so when somebody shines a yeah. big bright light on it, that's it actually right. Right. in a way is a blessing because yeah. then it, it surfaces yeah. this thing. The stuff that's kind of, you know, eh, it's lukewarm, it's easy for people to explain away, even if it's really obvious to most people. But when it is, as overt as it's been. It's out there now. It's like now we have something that we all have to deal with. It's not, you know, we can't be lukewarm and mealy-mouthed about it. Let's go to work and, and address this because it's so obvious. So in, in that way it's a silver lining. Right, right. <laughs> but but the but this the culture, the culture war that we're dealing with this with what Melinda Gates was describing as the the programmers, yes, the, yes. the hoodie guys, the yes. sea of white dudes. Yes. Um, <laughs> where we where we think all the great ideas are coming from. Yeah. What is your feeling on how do we combat that? So, you know, here's, a, here's an interesting perspective. I'm going to call on the entertainment industry okay. to put more images out there that are representative of what's really happening, right? So, you know, uh, I have a sister that's a lawyer, there, and, and, and she's older than I am, and there was a time when you just didn't see very many images of women lawyers or women doctors. But if you watch television, you watch the movies, there are plenty of those now, and the numbers, people can be what they can see. See. Yeah. But if the images out there are all about the sea of white men, then we will fight that struggle because people are impacted by what they see, the right? The power of representation. The power, that yeah. absolutely. And so I'm calling on people who have the power to change the images to do so and to show the truth of what's really going on. Okay, so yeah. Hollywood, are you listening? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Do you have any final advice for, for the young women who are here? Um, it, it maybe it's their first Grace Hopper conference. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what, how, what do you think they should do to get the most out of their experience here in Orlando this week? Well, first of all, I'm so glad that you're here. And I want you to be encouraged that there is a sisterhood, there is a community that cares about you, that has seen some of the same things, some of the challenges that maybe you don't even know about yet. But together, we can make a better world. We can be the change agents that we already are, but on a such bigger scale. So, you know, go for it. Don't ever let fear stop you, and you will make a success out of whatever you're going after. Those are words to live by. <laughs> yeah, yes. we need to get a bigger. We need to get a bigger boat, though. You got 18,000 people. That's right. You can't that's put that right. on your IM placard. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's a new solution for tomorrow. <laughs> exactly.
Great. Well, Brenda, Thank thanks you. so much. We're Thank so you. excited for you and to be here at Grace Hopper again. Thank you so much. Great I appreciate event. being Great here. Event. Okay. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Jeff Frick. We will have more from Grace Hopper in a little bit.